Dr. Steve Pachinik, MD, PhD, is an American psychiatrist, former State Department official, author, publisher. He co-wrote a lot of Tom Clancy's books, had a lot of his books turned into big films. He's a critically acclaimed author in psychopolitical thrillers and the co-creator of the best-selling Tom Clancy Op Center and Tom Clancy's Net Force paperbacks. Trained in psychiatry at Harvard University, international relations at MIT. His uh, novels are based on over 20 years. Yeah, he was a colonel in black ops, wrote the book on psychological warfare for the State Department, then adopted by the CIA, helped overthrow governments, assassinations. He won't get into it, but you can look him up if you'd like to. Um, very serious person we've got on the line. Member of the Council on Foreign Relations. He uh, told me on air when he was on about a month and a half ago, um, the interviews are there. They're posted at InfoWars.com. Just look up the last interview. He said, yeah, I just confronted uh, Dempsey. Got in his face and said, that's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And then it came out in the news later, actually, that Dempsey had been confronted. They didn't say it was Pachinik at a Council on Foreign Relations meeting. And then Dempsey came out and said, hey, the U.S. won't be behind the Iran attack. We don't want the blame. Well, it doesn't matter. We're going to be sucked into it. So just amazing inside info. He's not supposed to talk about what goes on inside the uh, meetings of the Council on Foreign Relations. But uh, we've only got him for, again, three segments. We're going to get him back on later in the week because... They're gearing up for a giant Iran strike, huge carrier task force groups, British build up. 20 nations plus have uh, their 25 nations are converging on the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, you've got the killing of the U.S. ambassador in Benghazi. Uh, and it, I've talked to a lot of my sources and they all say, including Pachinik, October surprise basically to Carterize Obama. And by the way, Pachinik worked for Carter, George Bush Sr., and others. So he's bipartisan uh, in his, quote, service of the country. But, but here to break this down for us, the point we're at geopolitically right now is Dr. Steve Pachinik. StevePachinik.com is his website if you want to find out about his best selling books. Uh, good to have you here with us, Doc. I'm going to try to shut up and give you the floor because we don't have a lot of time. But please break down where we are right now. I mean, I know you were against Obama, exposed the bin Laden thing, so it's not like you're for him to expose that this is meant to be blamed on him, this killing, but clearly the media is trying to deep six Obama. What's behind this geopolitically? What's behind this geopolitically is the extension of what you were brave enough and your audience was brave enough to understand. This is all an extension of the 9-11 disinformation and uh, false flag episode. It continued into the issue of the CIA and the confrontation between the CIA and our military and the president of the United States, continuing on their covert activities and trying to reposition themselves in the Middle East while the military under General Petraeus and under other generals are trying to pull us out of the Middle East. What's happening now is we have the overview of a Shiite power, the Iranians fighting the Sunnis, which is Saudi Arabia, but in the middle is Israel continuously playing with all of the players, including Saudi Arabia and particularly the diaspora Jews and the Jews of the United States as a way of putting pressure on Obama, as a way of pushing pressure on General Dempsey and General Petraeus to say that we want red lines in order to be able to attack Iran, and the answer is repeatedly, even by General Dempsey, the answer is no. We will not give you a red line. General Petraeus said not only we will not give you a red line, but we want you to know that under no circumstances, and I do not talk to General Petraeus, I'm a great admirer of his, I know what he is doing, is that he has repeatedly stated, as I had, that from a geopolitical point of view, Israel is a strategic liability and has been a strategic liability for over 20 years. Since 1968, we have had no need for Israel other than the fact that it covered us under the Soviet Union on the eastern, southern, and northern flank. For the first time since 1948, geopolitically, Israel is confronted by Hezbollah, a proxy for Iran, by Hamas and the proxies on the eastern bank of Jordan, and on the south by the Islamic Brotherhood or, or Al-Qaeda all of which they were part and parcel of. Israel is not innocent of any activities. And contrary to Bibi Netanyahu's speech today to CNN, where he wished everybody a Happy New Year, I, in return, wish Bibi Netanyahu and the Israelis a Happy New Year and wish that he first began to tell the truth. 
that the involvement of Israel was in 9-11. Over 134 Mossad operatives were picked up in 9-11. The FBI picked them up, debriefed them. They were clearly involved with the Pakistani ISI and Saudi Arabian intelligence. Then we get to the old issue of Osama bin Laden, which Obama said incorrectly and lied to the public that Osama bin Laden was killed by SEAL Team 6. Admiral McRaven had lied repeatedly. Unfortunately, this is an admiral, a, a, a decent admiral, but for whatever reason, he repeatedly insisted on saying SEAL Team 6 killed Osama bin Laden. When in fact, on your radio show 10 years ago, I said he was already dead. The Navy SEAL Team 6 will be disciplined by General Petraeus and others in the Special Forces. So what this means, in effect, is that we had an ambassador who was a very honorable ambassador working in the State Department under very good Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, who's been doing an excellent job of keeping everything quiet, as a, alongside of a lot of diplomats, including Mark Grossman and others, and a president who's tried to maintain this foreign contained it in a very effective way, and may have been undermined by the following people who once again came out of 9-11, your friends and mine, the neocon chicken hawks, Paul Wolfowitz, once again hiding behind Mitt Romney, Elliot Abrams hiding behind Mitt Romney, uh, uh, Chertoff, the head of Homeland Security, who now heads off the Chertoff Group, which is nothing more than a cover for the CIA and FBI, run by Charles Allen, a former CIA operative, all hiding behind Mitt Romney, who himself has no idea of what he's talking about in foreign policy. So you have a president, a presidential candidate, who can't utter even the right words, with an entire team composed of Bob Zellick, Roger Ailes, and Murdoch. He has no idea that the, foreign, the most important enemy, he says, is Russia. No, Russia is not our most important enemy. We are a superpower, as Colin Powell has said repeatedly, cool it, Mitt Romney, and get your facts straight. Mitt Romney is being run by a guy named Don Fenter, a uh, protege of the neocon vultures, Paul Wolfowitz, Rod Richard Pearl. And once again, what we have is a fight between the neocon Jews, Israel on their side, and the fact that we have a, 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 an intelligence service that is split under General Petraeus, trying to maintain peace and stability in the Middle East, a State Department that's trying to maintain peace and stability, and a situation that has been provoked through agitation propaganda through local Libyans and as well as foreigners, foreigners meeting mercenaries and others concerned with agitation propaganda in order to destabilize Libya and to particularly assassinate our ambassador. Why this particular ambassador? I think it's very important for your audience to understand who Christopher Stevens was. He was considered, and the key word here is an Arabist. It's a very rare word to use in the description of an outstanding foreign service officer. An Arabist was a term that was used by the neocon, the Israelis, and others who did not like experts, who were specially trained in Arabic studies, spoke Arabic, were sensitive to the Arab culture, were trained specifically in what was considered the Protestant college developed in the 1800s by famous uh, missionaries on our part. This was all Presbyterian missionaries, which eventually became the Lebanese, the Beirut University of Lebanon, where subsequently great men like Mr. Kerr and others were trained in, and Arabists whom I had worked with on the only peace treaty that has ever existed was part of Christopher Stevens. All right, we'll stay there. And basically, you t uh, Doc, we got to go to break. Come back and explain it in layman's terms here. I know you're talking to the intelligence community, but, but I mean, obviously, you're not a fan of Obama either. Um, but you told me, you're saying Israeli intelligence with Saudi intel is who killed the ambassador. This is pretty big news. Stay there. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for Truth Seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. 
This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find at InfoWarsShop.com, Non Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. That's right, an empire of corrupt criminals that work together who want to destroy liberty and freedom worldwide. It's real simple. You're for freedom or you're for tyranny. I stand with liberty. Now, Dr. Pachinik won't brag about himself, but over the years interviewing him now for about 11 years or 10 years, I've looked him up, uh, and, he, I, and you come across him. He was the main psychiatrist or psych warfare guy that Jimmy Carter had in the Camp David Accords with Anwar Sadat and actually got him to do the deal uh, by actually really talking to him. So he, so he knows what he's talking about here. So what they're saying is this ambassador, well, I mean, it's simple. You want to get a war going, you kill the ambassador, you get your jihadis th that are in there to start blowing stuff up, and then you blame Obama for it. Now, let's be clear. I don't like Obama, I don't like Mitt Romney, and I really don't like Obama on his anti-gun, all the rest of it. I mean, and Dr. Pachinik's worked for George Bush Sr. and Brent Scrocroft, so he's not political as well. He's just giving you what he believes is really going on. I mean, do you really believe anybody that a bunch of jihadis went through all those special forces guys they had guarding the ambassador? Do you really think there were only four security guards there? I mean, uh, Al-Qaeda, quote, bragged that we you know, we know your security. So this is amazing. So j just tell me what you told me privately in that 45-minute conversation we had yesterday, Dr. Pachenik. I mean, to tell people where we're standing right now, uh, I mean, how this ties into Iran, where this is going. What we are is at the brink of war that's being precipitated by two major countries. That is Israel, particularly Bibi Netanyahu, who knows his country is failing economically, socially, politically. He is isolated by the United States. When General Petraeus two years ago said correctly it's a liability, he already immediately tried to take action to draw us back in by mobilizing the Jewish uh, committees like APAC, the Zionists, the neocons, and Mitt Romney and all the men behind them. But by the At way, the you're Jewish, Dr. Israel. Pachinik. You're Jewish, so you're not... You're not a, a, I'm a, Jewish. Yeah. I come out of the Holocaust. But remember, Netanyahu did not come out of the Holocaust. Contrary to everything Netanyahu is telling America and is telling Obama, everything he says is a lie, including what his father wrote. His father was a teacher at Cornell. What he continuously says, and I'm saying this as a Jew on the eve of a holiday, is that the Israel was the foundation of salvation for the persecution of Jews. Nothing could have been a greater lie than the fact that Israel or Palestine at the time was of no value to the Israelis, on the contrary to the Jews. On the contrary, when Eichmann came and he was trained in Hebrew, 1927, a deal offered by Hitler to save thousands of Hungarian troops and, and, and Jews in return for trucks, Ben Gurion said, I would rather have 400 cows than one diaspora Jew. Repeatedly, Israel turned down any help to help the diaspora Jew. They did, however, in 1933 in Palestine, take 36,000 German Jews in return for money and worked with Heydrich and worked with Heydrich, who was a Jew. I'm, I'm talking as a diaspora Jew. There were 165,000 German Jews called Mischlinger in Hitler's army. None of which Netanyahu wants to talk about. None well, I mean, Dr. Pachinik, this is admit. super deep history you're getting into, and we appreciate well, let you. Me, let me just say something. Everything Bibi is saying to America and to the American Jews is an absolute unmitigated lie. Not since 1968 was Israel ever interested in the diaspora Jew or using the Holocaust. Then they created a machinery to use the Holocaust as a way of mobilizing guilt and anxiety over the world. But they're not the only culprits. The next culprit is Saudi Arabia and the Somari uh, Seven, that is the wife of King Abu Dalakis. Let's put it this way, very simply. The Faisal and Saud families are not legitimate heirs to Saudi Arabia. It was created by England. They created in a concept called divide and conquer, a family that came out of Doria. Most of you saw that in, in the Lawrence of Arabia film. 
It does not exist. They are Wahhabis. They distort the Quran. The message of the Quran throughout history has always been peace and love and working with all of the religions. They were formidable. And the Wahhabis are the total distortion. The true descendants of Mecca and Medina are not the King Faisal of Saudi. They are the Hashemites. But the British took them away from Saudi Arabia, put one in Iraq who was four years old, and another one in Jordan, so that they would never have an ability to have the true leaders of the Prophet of Muhammad. So what we have here is a collusion between Saudi Arabia and the neocon Jews of America and Israel against a president who, whether I like or dislike, and may have lied on Osama bin Laden, is the son of... And, and it's the son of a CIA operative, the, the grandson of a CIA operative, who understands very well what the issues of intelligence are, including the United States ambassador, who understands very well what... Sure, put it in layman's terms, Neocon though, for people... Sure, sure, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, bottom line, what's the point of killing the ambassador? What's the point the of point turning out... Killing the ambassador is to precipitate a war so that Israel can finally get into Iran and try to destroy Iran. It will be the beginning of the end of Israel. It's Armageddon for Israel. They want Israel wants to go in, but it wants to force America to take it out of its trouble in, is, in Iran, because Israel cannot succeed in any flight into Iran. It is impossible logistically and strategically. Israel lost every war since 68. There is not one war they have succeeded in, despite what they may say to everybody else. And the last war, where they lost thousands of men, will be a reminder to the Israeli mothers that every time they send their children to war, they will die in multiples, and no Americans will come to help you. Petraeus will not come. Dempsey will not come. Neither will any other soldiers or intelligence operatives. So what we have here is an internal strife against Saudi Arabia and the United States attacking one of our ambassadors and killing them in the name of the fact that he was a representative of the United States and he was an Arabist. Now, let me tell you what an Arabist is very quickly so your audience understands. They were famous people who helped to develop a, a treaty, the only treaty that's ever been done between Israel and a Muslim club in Egypt was called the Camp David Accord, of which I was privileged to be a member. And one of the most famous people there was Herman Isles, the ambassador Egypt, an Arabist. Another one, Frank Wisner, who should have been Secretary of State, a great Foreign Service officer. Another person is a man by the name of Chas Freeman, who was accused by the neocon of being pro-Israel, anti-Israel, because he speaks Arabic. He's a scholar. He's a Foreign Service officer. Well, so what you're seeing here is a division within the United States by Zionists, not Jews only, but Zionists, Israeli Mossad operatives, and Saudi financing in order to denigrate the value of our Foreign Service officers who are trained in culture, Arabic studies, including April Glaspie, and the, and the president who got rid of all of our Arabists under neocon pressure was Clinton. Ironically, Hillary Clinton was trying to maintain the peace. Her husband was totally intimidated by the neocon Jews to get rid of every Arabist in the State Department and put in people like Martin Indyk. Martin right. Indyk, who was ambassador to Israel, was nothing more than an Australia spy who within one day became an American citizen, was appointed by Dennis Ross, another neocon, who works with Paul Wolfowitz, and made our ambassador to Israel. All right, well, let me stop you, uh, Doc, Doc, Doc. We're going to have you back up very early this week for an hour and a half because you, I mean, obviously you need to go over this whole history for people that don't understand it. But, but, but here's the issue. Uh, we're about to go to break, but what I need you to understand here is you've got the British fleet massing. They never go somewhere unless there's a war. You've got 25 nations all gathering. This is hardly in the news. You've got QE Unlimited starting. You've got our government digging in like it's the end of the world. All the evidence I see means they're, says they're going ahead in October late October with this, and it could lead to World War III. Is that accurate? That is accurate. It could be earlier than October because we have Yom Kippur, and I predicted on your radio show, and I predicted to our national security people privately that Bibi Netanyahu would start something 
on Rosh Hashanah. This was over a year ago, and I said it on your radio show. He was as predictable as a clock, and the Israelis will be very predictable on Yom Kippur. In a couple of weeks, they will try to initiate another war, unless their ex-Mossad operatives and their ex bet will take out Netanyahu and do to Netanyahu what happened to Rabin. They know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, this he will bring down Israel, the world, and there will be a third world war. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, you know, I am just absolutely stunned right now by the things that Dr. Pachenik is talking about. Clearly, the way the mainstream media is absolutely pouncing on and uh, going after uh, Obama is just so clear. I don't like Obama. I hate him. I hate his socialism, his anti-gun, all of it. I, I wish Romney was an alternative. I'm not saying vote for either one of them. And I know Pachenik is, is, is you know, apolitical when it comes to this. Doc, we only have about five minutes left. You've really dropped some bombshells here. But most analysts say this could easily lead to World War III. Uh, and the neocons are trying to destabilize Russia and overthrow them, trying to turn them into an in, a new enemy, a new arms race. Doesn't the military industrial complex know if they start World War III, there won't be anywhere to spend all that money they're getting? Well, the military industrial complex at this point is totally denuded. What they're afraid of is the $2 trillion subsecration, the, the, the decrease in money that they're going to get in the military. But the military right now is divided. What you have is military generals who've had experience and no longer want to go into Iraq and Afghanistan and have told the president and others, this is enough. We have to get out of the sandbox, as General Petraeus says, and we have to leave. We have a bigger issue that's much more important than Middle East for us, and that's cyber war, as Keith Alexander said, and it's just, you know, the issue, as Obama said, East Asia and the Pacific and China's growing in. The United States has lost all of its soft power by going in there, uh, among other things, to, quote, help Israel. And notice these invasions haven't helped Israel. Israel is more insecure than ever. That's correct. Because of their own paranoia and continuous paranoia and the insecurity, they keep feeding it in in a loop. And what happens is their soldiers are no longer equipped. Remember, these are not the same Zionists that came in and established the state of Israel in 1948, which, by the way, they then committed in 1948 euthanasia and genocide, which subsequently the Israelis admitted to. The ringworm children. Boys, the ringworm children. Killing the Palestinians. Well, they also so, killed a bunch of uh, they also killed a bunch of the Sephardic Jews with the radiation. You know about that? Yes, I also know that they created a lot of agitation and propaganda in Morocco in order to force the Moroccan Jews to leave a very friendly uh, friend to the Jews, King Hassan of Morocco. So the Israelis and the Zionists have created a, a use the Jews of the diaspora, that means the Polish, Russian Jews and Sephardic Jews, as a weapon to, to, to manipulate world opinion, to create agitation propaganda, in the same way Saudi Arabia is using their people, the Salafis, to be the thugmen against the United States and use it in the term of Al-Qaeda or any form they want. But Saudi Arabia, which is falling apart now because it's only a second and third generation illegitimate ruling class from an illegitimate king, is now in the process of failing apart. Both states, Israel and Saudi Arabia, are in desperate uh, situation, and they're trying to force America back into the Middle East. Well, you got while Dempsey. Obama correctly is saying no. And while Petraeus is saying no, while well, Dempsey is saying we will not go sure. to war in order to protect you. Well, Doc, in closing, we're going to get you back up in the next few days. We appreciate uh, your time, StevePachenik.com. My but, pleasure, and thank you. But, but, I mean, in closing, you did confront Dempsey. You told us about it. Later, he yeah. came out after that and, and said, hey, don't blame the U.S. or me of Israel attacks. I think the answer, uh, short of what you were talking about, which I certainly don't want earlier, uh, is to have our military and our government unify and say, we're not going to do this. Stop it. Because if, because if they don't call this out, th uh, if this looks like false flag city to me. Because if, if elements in Israel are this, this arrogant right now, they might pull a false flag. What do you say in 20 seconds? They will they absolutely pulled a false flag. This is a false flag. Our military clearly pointed out to me that the Libyan embassy was very far away 
when they had two days' notice and basically. I tell you no what, do two more anything. minutes. We got our next guest coming up, but do two more minutes. One minute break. Come back and make the point about embassy security. Dr. Pachenik's our guest. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com, sign up as a distributor, and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. BBC on a telegraph saying he manipulated the communist uh, who is fighting against to kill the prime minister of Italy. He'll never talk about that on air every time we bring it up. Uh, he served, I don't know, four or five presidents. He was a colonel before that from the Vietnam era in black ops. Only got a few minutes left with Dr. Steve Pachinik, who is Jack Ryan character. Uh, Clancy said that that's a composite of, uh, of Dr. Pachinik and a few others, but that he helped write those books. He's one of the experts helping Tom Clancy, and he's also, again, had his has books put into major films. He's a very accomplished person. He's a big deal, uh, and he's here telling us this, and he's communicating with intelligence agencies all over the world right now through this show. And you can take away from this what you want. I don't think you're idiots. So I will bring on high-powered guests who will have discussions like go on behind the scenes at the Pentagon, the uh, high-level brass meetings, and the highest levels of the Council on Foreign Relations. This guy's worked for George Bush Sr., worked right under Henry Kissinger. I'm not going to get into it all, but, I mean, he's definitely from the major power structure. And the fact that he's here saying these types of things, uh, he's been on the show off and on for 10 years, really is frightening because he's not pulling any punches now. I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Pachinik knows where the bodies are buried. Doc, uh, you're going to be back with us Tuesday for an hour and a half because yes, this sir. is moving quickly. World War III, right. financial collapse. That's why all this is happening. But but talk about the embassy and the killing of the ambassador in Benghazi and, and the point you've made that that your average jihadis, you know, basically couldn't do this and the message that was sent and how that ties into your sources. You were telling me off air that your Pentagon sources, I mean, they know who really uh, killed this guy and the message it's meant to send. Well, the message he was meant to send, the Pentagon sources had been informed me that the distance between the Libyan uh, embassy where our ambassador was and where the rioters were it was so large and, and two days of uh, a delay in response, meaning sim simply that they were professionals ready to take out our ambassador, who was an Arabist. And the reason I say he's an Arabist, it was basically they wanted to kill him because he was too influential in the Arab world. He was too dangerous to Israeli interests, the Saudi interests, and to certain American national security interests run by the neocon. Now when we say that Obama's like Carter, I work for Jimmy Carter, and Jimmy Carter was the only president of the United States to ever make a Camp David peace accord, the only president of the United States to implement the human rights issues, and the only president of the United States to fire 4,000, listen to me very carefully, 4,000 human operatives of the CIA. He realized how disastrous the CIA had been and what General Eisenhower said all along, that this is a legacy of ashes and it will destroy our country until we contain and restrain the CIA. And this is where Jimmy Carter, a great president in retrospect, and I think Obama should be very proud of him, but the neocons have degraded him to say this is our Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was the only president who ever made a peace treaty with Israel. I worked with Anwar Sadat. I went with Menachem Begin. I worked with Herman Niles. You got arrested by Jeff, Assad. Jeff Freeman. I mean, you got arrested. These the great men. Uh, well, you know, someday you've got to come on and talk about all the amazing things you did. I mean, I know most of it's classified, but you know it's what's... It's not. I'll talk about it. But let's have some more time, and I want to talk to your audience and thank them for listening. And thank you. Well, let me ask you this question briefly here, uh, Dr. Pachinik. 
sure. What is the strategy? Because I know you were you were on here a few months ago criticizing Obama. I mean, I'm again, I'm not I'm apolitical. I'm not Romney or Obama. I want to get your perspective. I respect your view and perspective. We're gonna get another one here in a moment. I want listeners to really, you know, hear this inside info for themselves and decide if they think it's accurate or not. But what how do they think they're gonna get away with this? Putting Al Qaeda well, they're gonna get away with it because as I told you on the last show, there's a real issue that Dempsey had presented to the whole group of us that we are the military and our American military is really concerned about, and that is the few minutes uh, delay time or pre-positioning time that Israel will not give the United States, and it will launch an attack, which presumably by Netanyahu and the Israeli Defense Forces strategy will think, will force us into the, uh, saving them from total destruction. And the answer is Netanyahu has no idea that Petraeus will not save him, Dempsey will not save him, our Navy will not save him, McRaven will not save him, neither will Obama. He cannot get that message through. So he's pushing this through until he kills one of our ambassadors, precipitates what we call agitation propaganda, only with the approval of Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia in Israel are twins, the doppelgangers. There's no way you can separate Israel from Saudi Arabia or Saudi Arabia of Israel. They go back all the way to 9-11. They go back to the days when Jimmy Carter fired 4,000 operatives because the uh, people went to Saudi Arabia. Those people who were left in the agency went to Saudi Arabia, the Mossad, and the Pakistani ISI to reconstitute an intelligence service which was totally illegal. And many of those who came in the Carter administration, Jews like Dennis Ross, Martin Indyk, who was an operative underneath the Australian government and was an American citizen for only one day, was appointed an American ambassador to Israel so Dennis Ross, the neocon, could control him. All right, well, let me, let me stop right there. Let me stop right there, uh, Doc. We're going to be back on Tuesday uh, to break this down. But bottom line, the, the 25 fleets, this is London Telegraph Associated Press, are converging. 25 nations are converging on the strategically important Strait of Hormuz. They've never done this in the last five years of saber rattling. My intel is right now Israel has tentatively greenlit an attack any time in the next month and a half against Iran. Iran will then attack U.S. bases all over the Middle East with their missiles drawing the United States in by having the Al-Qaeda groups that Saudi Arabia runs start attacking U.S. facilities. They believe that will create a sympathetic response domestically in the U.S. for a call to attack Arabs because people are are uh, politically and geopolitically totally ignorant uh, you know, to the level of basically being brain dead. And so now there's this saber rattling, yeah, let's bomb the Arabs. You can see the manipulation. The propaganda is what targeted about a five-year-old uh, mentality. Briefly, do you concur with that analysis? Yes, basically I'll summarize it in this. As Hitler created the first Holocaust of the Jews, the Netanyahu will be responsible for the second Holocaust of the Jews in the 21st century. He will be the Hitler of the 21st century to the Jews. On this New Year's Eve, this is what I say about Netanyahu. He was part of 9-11. He was part of the conspiracy, the agitation propaganda, the, the, the killings, and now the agitation wow. and precipitation of war. When that war goes, we will have a Holocaust and a pogrom, the likes of which we haven't seen since the days of Hitler. Okay. This is our new Hitler. Okay, wow. Dr. Pachinik, thank you so much. We'll talk to you Tuesday. My pleasure. Bye. All right, there he goes. We have Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley waiting, and I did not even know this would go in this direction. I am I am in way over my head, and I study this stuff 24-7. Folks, if you knew who Dr. Pachinik was, I mean, he's been in every black op you can imagine. He's the guy Jack Ryan's based on in Patriot Games. I mean, Webster Tarpley is a doctor of history. Uh, an economist who's been all over the world, been to Tripoli under bombardment, just been to um, Syria. Pach uh, Pachinik's been arrested by Assad's dad before, back when he was the leader. I mean, it's, it's just, it's so wild. I don't even know what to say about this. Pachinik is pulling no punches. I mean, I had no idea that would even go in that direction. And, and you, you know, as for uh, Netanyahu being Hitler, uh, again, I don't have a dog in this fight. I just want my Bill of Rights and Constitution. <laughs> I don't want World War III. And, uh, you know, you've got two famous Jews like Netanyahu and you got Pachinik, who's Jewish, over there in this fight going on. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com.
When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. (laughs) 